Sports Day is brought to you by Barton Community College. Explore your future and get started now. Visit GoBarton.com. Okay, Sports Day in three, two, one. Keon McMillan for Salina Central. Four five speed, incredibly fast. I think Salina Central has gotten better quarterback play than maybe what they thought. They've just been playing with so much confidence and and playing together as a team and have the mentality of. Uh, you know, whatever comes their way, they're going to find a way to make it happen, which has been awesome. We still got to play that out um, based on Adrian's health, based on Will's health. You know, it's easy to say, hey, we're going to we're going to shelve you, and then maybe something that happens to Adrian and Jake, and you got to pull it. Or Adrian's healthy, and you can you can hold him. You know, I, I've got to visit with Will about that. Does this mean that Kansas believes that this is kind of what the IARP process was going to do? Maybe, uh, but overall, it, it certainly seems to suggest that. Kansas thinks that this is enough. And the pitch from Presley. A swing and a ground ball to third. Bregman has it. The throw to first, and that'll do it. The Astros even up the World Series with a 5 to nothing win tonight. And four of their pitchers combine to no hit. The Philadelphia Phillies. I think Justin Berlin has got to figure out himself, especially in the World Series. And I say this, I get his career as a Hall of Famer, all the things, right? But it's no coincidence at this point how much he has struggled in these bigger moments. Look, I think the, the, the pitch clock is the biggest of the three that, that we have coming. I think it, it, it really does alter the pace of the game. And away by Sandstrom, and Sandstrom is slow to get up, and they score! Tavares, his 11th career hat trick, and the Leafs lead 5-2! Wait a minute. Dang straight. <laughs> so there's a no-hitter in the World Series, but the hockey guy's excited in the... <laughs> well, he was the home team announcer. Welcome to Sports Day on 1590 KBGB and 95.5 FM. Steve Webster with you, and Mike Corson, and a glum-looking <laughs> Mike Escher. There you go. There's, Gloom there's and a, doom, baby. What can a, I say? Here's a smile for you. <laughs> yeah. It right. won't last long. How you doing, boys? Fantastic. It's, it's Thursday, man. We're, we're rocking it here tonight. We've got uh, fo- some football games going on across the state tonight. And then tomorrow we get into it. We've got a full football show today for you. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't. How do we land these people? They just It's awesome personality on this side of the window well, exactly i just i just sit in here and just talk to whoever comes in the door and today it's going to be fun aaron beck in for the great Bend panthers also he'll be joined by tied in and linebacker colton brock zach baird will duck through the doorway to come in <laughs> <laughs> and he'll have lineman cole gilland with him today and then just because we bring you the main course of football, Mike Corson on the prowl, he's gonna, he has a cherry on top or a strawberry on top, whatever you like. He'll be talking with Great Bend Panther quarterback Caden Sharman. How about the show today, my friends? You've been hogging those Panther football players all year. I'm taking some <laughs> back. Sharman's become a, become. I have his own walk up song. This is like the third or fourth time he's been on. Well, right? He's been on the third, but okay, right. guess yeah. what? He's a track kid too. Oh heavens! <laughs> <laughs> of course. Are we going to have anything to say at all when we get in the track and no, field season? No, it'll be the Mike Corson show. We'll rotate chairs. And... Ooh, you think you can run the board? Oh, by then. Okay. Look, right. look how he's he's this like the whole winter season. Okay. I feel like Ukraine. You know, I've lost Crimea to. To Corson over here, man. He just keeps moving in on my territory. I love it. I love it. What an addition. You the the two guys over there. So my name is Michael. <laughs> Mikael. So what was that? <laughs> you do go to some places in space that I've never been before. Okay. That's <laughs> all I've heard of some of the space. <laughs> <laughs> You've been you go to different galaxies. I haven't been there some of those places. All right, sounds the past twenty four hours. Let co- Let's get to it. Boy, I tell you what, you talk about you want to get a high school football primer. Coupling does a great job. I'm not knocking your guy on Friday, but Connor Nickel brings it pretty yes, much. He that, does. Was, that was pretty good yesterday. I this you know, those K prep guys, they they go out on a limb, you know. They say, Okay, this is what I think, you know, it may not be right, but they they I ask him every West bracket who's gonna come out. That was good stuff yesterday. But he does have Salina Central beating Great Bend 35-28 tomorrow night. 
What did he say on Maxfield, Rollins County? You can't remember. It's a toss-up. Okay. It's a toss-up. Let me tell you this. I love Connor. <laughs> I was at the... Well, you, you, you're one of these big-time media guys across the state. I was at TMP Scott City, and he got that one wrong, too. So no fear, Panther fans. But did you have? Did you make a pick on that game? I try not to pick. Okay, all right, fine. Well, yeah, I hadn't seen Scott City at that point, so I I would have went TMP too. All right, well, that's so, yeah. well, Connor Nickel bringing it yesterday. Matt Westerhouse, Great Bend Panther, Great Bend High School athletic director. You didn't know who that was. That was your story. I took that audio took from a lot of audio <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Talking about the Great Bend Panthers, and he also had a good point in your story on GreatBendPost.com about, you know, football season, you know, it kind of sets the tone, gets the town fired up, man, Great Bend's ready to go. They've had some good teams the past few years, but, you know, after a couple down years, now everybody's fired back up again. Man, that's going to be awesome. We're going to talk Panther football coming up with Aaron Beck. The game tomorrow will be one zero four three. the point starting at 6.30. Is that... High school football's always been big in my life, and I was looking out my back door the other day. I'm, I'm literally in the shadow of Memorial Stadium. You can see it right out my back door. You know, little by little, people are starting to zone in on what part of town you're in. <laughs> no. I don't even know where you live. I so to, I've, I've been kind of going in here. Complete strangers always come up to me. You still live over there? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> well, he, he, see, Hesher, he doesn't care. He just has... Overgrown grass and weeds in his yard. Whoa, so whoa, whoa, in whoa, Oisington, whoa, you can whoa, find whoa. it. You can just find his house whoa, right away when you, drive, when you drive into Oisington. I actually was complimented on how well I took care of the yard while I was in Colorado. That sounds impossible. Well, why aren't you taking care of it when you get back? <laughs> well, because so like Kipper the- comes in here, you've got to hide when you have focus on Hoisington over here. <laughs> Code enforcement officer for the city. Uh, is Mike Hesher going to be in today? Well, I'm just waiting for the sheriff of Barton County to come after me. That's the one well, I'm looking for. that's another thing, and he needs to right now, I'm telling you. Chris Kleiman. This is an interesting story. Will Howard is throws four touchdown passes. He was supposed to be redshirted this year, and he's playing real good. So Chris Kleiman asked, well, what are you going to do? I mean, if... If Adrian Martinez is ready to go, are you gonna are you gonna pull his red shirt after you had all this play? And of course, your guy's sitting in the background, ready to come in and break all of Lynn Dickey's passing records. This is why we have to have the portal. We brought we already had two quarterbacks. We bring in Martinez. We ha- draft the top quarterback in the state of Kansas, who's a stud. So you're gonna have three, four, five kids that can play quarterback. Do you year. pull his red shirt, man? If he, he that's a tough one. Well, it said, really is. They're going to have a discussion. This will be his fourth game coming up on Saturday if he plays against Texas. Man, this is – you've got a chance yeah. to get the Big 12 championship game? Because they have the kid coming up from Mays. Yeah, burn his red shirt. We're, we're <laughs> loaded in the future. He has proven nothing on the college level. He's a and high no, school I'm done student. I'm Jake Rubley. I'm talking about oh, – Avery Johnson. Yeah. That's who I'm talking about. He's a high school kid. He has done nothing uh, on the college level. Derby's like a college. Does Joe Charbonneau mean anything to anybody? Ooh. <laughs> you know Joe Charbonneau? Cleveland Indians? Rookie of the year one year, and you never heard from him again. Okay, I'm showing my age. My bad. Pulled a Joe Charbonneau. <laughs> the sad thing is I knew who he was talking about. <laughs> Do you know who them? Anyway, you're the, the next gen. This is like Markley Van Camp and Robbins in the afternoon. You have the young guy. Then you have the middle of the guy. And then, you have, then you have the old guy. I was going to throw out Cher. It's like a one-hit wonder. <laughs> she was yeah, who? One. Cher was a one-day wonder? Okay. Was, oh, on that, ba- on that battleship? If oh. I could turn back time. Like that was the best music way. video ever. K-State. <laughs> K-State coming up, Texas. That's going to be a 6 o'clock start on Saturday. What time's the Georgia-Tennessee game? I have no idea. I bet you it's 2.30. Be a nice day of football. Oh yeah, KU plays at two thirty. I'm going to be watching Georgia. Come on, one and two. It is the game of the century. <laughs> I like those orange uniforms. Game of the century was 1969 when Arkansas played Texas. There is they a were def- one and two in the country. I mean, it was so big. Richard Nixon went to Fayetteville for the game. <laughs> okay, Ar- that is the definition of a game of a century when teams one and two meet in the regular season. I read this. Nebraska, Oklahoma, exactly was a game of the century. Jeff Kenny. Okay, what was the game where the trombone player couldn't tackle? 
They weren't ranked. That, that was Stanford in uh, California, Cal. wasn't it? Yeah. Or yeah. No, that's <laughs> Stanford and Boulder West. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh boy, Bill Self uh, suspended yesterday. This was, I thought I went and started trying to find audio on this national story. It's not they don't care. No, Myron Medcap did talk about it a little bit, but they go on a podcast to do it, uh, thinking maybe KU thinks this is enough. I don't think so. The Independent Accountability Review Panel. Do they have a little? Do they have like sweaters that have that on there? The I A R P. That that was for no. That's tired. I just remember AARP. Yes. So since I'm the old one in the group, Dan Schulman, the call last night on KVGB. Ryan Presley gets JT Riamuto out to end the game. No hitter last night. Five nothing. I thought the series was over with. Not at all. Well, and once again, it goes back. What you hit four home runs the night before, then you can't get a base hit. Yeah, I tried. And they'll score six to tonight. I'm trying for that's the baseball. Somebody Christian should Javier try for a single. Who I let go last year before the fantasy baseball season started. So. Oh God, we're still talking about that. Well, yeah, but he did, he doesn't have a World Series ring, does he? No, he like doesn't. all the rest of the Iuka hustlers do. <laughs> Jessica Mendoza talking about Justin Verlander goes tonight. He's had a great career. Really has oh and six in yeah. the World Series. Thanks. He'll, he'll be on the mound tonight, but we know it will go back to Houston for Game Six. Major League Commissioner Fred Manfred. God bless the man. The rule change that will have the biggest impact. I'm sorry, Corson, that you want to see those pictures of people eating popcorn, <laughs> you know, the guy's wife, between pitches, not anymore. The pitch clock is going to be on next year. It's going to be the best thing you've ever seen. How long has baseball been around, do you suppose? Since Abner? Double day. Yeah, but no one had tweeter machines back then. They, they, they don't have a... They... So you changed, you catered to the lowest common denominator once again because I... Have an attention span of an ant? <laughs> well, yes. That's America, yes. you got to change the shift. That's actually going to change the game, make it more entertaining. Well, I understand that, but now at least I don't have to see a guy just walk behind the mound and things like that. The NBC World Series with the with the pitch clock, I mean, they had 14 to 7 games they'd be done in 2.30. And, there's, and, and the guys don't, they get in a rhythm, they throw strikes. You know, but if they took the money out of the game, get rid of the commercials. So, How dare you? That ain't going to happen. <laughs> we need to bring Gray Ben Panther games with no commercials. Go tell Matt that, okay? Yeah, but I was down at Derby and Mays, and for a high school game, they have it on TV. It's a joke to sit there and watch it in person. But it wasn't because of a pitch clock. They have a... They've got whatever. a play clock in football. Yeah, They've got a... They have Shot a, clock in basketball. Yeah, so it's not good enough for baseball, okay? You're going to love it. I promise. If not... And get your it, money back. What's the enforcement? It's going to be like the guys that aren't supposed to step out of the box now and spit on their hands. Yeah, you can't. They do it anyway. It's either ball or a strike. You'll love it. Mike, just trust me, man. Just trust me. I like it when I shrug on radio. People can see that. <laughs> They're watching hash. <laughs> and finally, our final uh, <laughs> sound of the past 24 hours. The sound on SN590, my favorite station in Toronto. John Tavera scores on a goal assisted by Austin Matthews. His 11th hat trick in his career, my course, and you've got to appreciate that. The Maple Leafs, by the way, beat the Flyers 5-2. to two. I always love to bring you hockey highlights here on yeah, Sports Day. But don't be bringing Matthews. I want some, some of that next level. Gotcha. Okay, some other sports headlines today. Lady Cougar volleyball, they end their season at Seward last night. Start the season 11-0, and then you have to go on the road in the first round of Region 6. Tough year for the Lady Cougars. They end the year 17-15. and 15. Wichita State playing basketball last night. They beat Newman 83-52 in an exhibition. And the Kansas City Chiefs expect to have newly acquired wide receiver Kadarius Toney on the field Sunday night when they face the Tennessee Titans. Sports headlines of the day. And I know this. Are you excited about this? Cleveland Browns general manager Andrew Barry expects suspended quarterback Deshaun Watson to start on December 4th in Houston against his former team. Doesn't that seem kind of weird? You give him, okay, we're going to give him an 11-game suspension. And the game that he comes back in is going to be against his old team. NFL's got it right. They know how to play this stuff up. Comments? Or I just go to break. Probably got to go to it's break. These guys are ready to get on the air. Travesty that he's coming back. Yeah, head coach Aaron Beck 
coming up next here on Sports Day. Also, Colton Brock in. We football heavy today on Sports Day. Zach Baird coming in a little bit later with Cole Gilland. You've got Caden Sharman back. It's funny to see these guys. With, I'm always 40. I don't, I don't recognize this guy. He doesn't know your name. Just make sure. He, as long as you got a number, that's the way I am. What's your name? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're 22. That's right. Okay. Sports Day rolling on after this. If you need physical therapy, consider Advanced Therapy in Great Bend and Progressive Therapy in Larned and Hayes. Hello, this is Austin Alford. I'd like to introduce to you today one of the most popular pieces of equipment we have to train core strength, shoulder stability, core stability, and even to improve balance. Come check out the core sticks for yourself at Progressive Physical Therapy Center in Hayes. You don't need to hurt. Physical therapy can help. Call Advanced or Progressive Therapy and Sports Medicine to explore your treatment options and get your life back. Venture Corporation is now hiring for a CDL tanker operator driver. We'll operate the same truck all week. New higher wages with flexible hours, no weekends, and time and a half over 40 hours. Blue Cross and Blue Shield Health Insurance, Vision Insurance, Section 125 Cafeteria Plan, 401k Retirement Plan with match. Venture Corporation is an equal opportunity employer. Women and minorities encouraged. Apply in person at 214 South Highway 281 in Great Bend. Online at VentureCorpKS.com or call Leslie at Venture Corporation. Homegrown, family owned. It's another instant finalist day in the Shop at Home for the Holidays $10,000 shopping spree presented to you by Bauer Computers and Mater Plumbing, Heating, and Air, your Bryant dealer. Now, Auto Body Repair Shop is where you want to be today, so you want to stop in, scan that QR code, get yourself entered because we got a $10,000 shopping spree we got to give away right before Christmas. You're going to want to go shopping. I think you can find a way to spend that money. And while you've popped your head in here out at 20th in Kansas here today, get here before 5 o'clock, maybe ask them some questions you know like hey uh, uh, how do you work with the insurance companies how's all that work if something were to happen or maybe you got a little work on your car that you just want them to come take a look at give you an estimate well stop on in there 20th in kansas today they'll get you taken care of and who knows you could win a ten thousand dollar shopping spree for your effort so stop on in to auto body repair shop before five o'clock today part of the shop at home for the holidays ten thousand dollar shopping spree presented by bauer computers and mater plumbing heating and air it's time to talk Great Bend High School football with head coach Aaron Beck here on Sports Day. Welcome back. Sports Day here on KBGB, and it's a Thursday and a lot of fun day before the regional playoffs, and the Great Bend Panthers are talking about their next game. Aaron Beck in studio today, along with tight end and linebacker Colton Brock. Guys, welcome into the show Fun time of the year, Coach Beck. Yeah, yes, it is. We're we're kind of riding a little bit of high here, and it just feels like uh, each week we're kind of we're kind of in the same boat. We put ourselves in the same position on Fridays, and then um, enjoy it through the weekend and, and back to the grindstone throughout the week. Colton, can you feel it in the community? The excitement, how this thing's grown since week one. Oh yeah, um, it's it's pretty cool. You can be walking through Walmart just trying to buy your groceries, and people are. <laughs> Stopping you and telling you, hey, good job Friday, keep it up. Yeah, that's it's it's a lot of fun to see that community. What's it? It's it's really neat. You know, you get to these schools that you know we play a central tomorrow. They've got a south. Wichita's got every direction. But man, you get to wear great bend on your jersey. How, how's that feel? It feels great. Just the hometown, the community's good. It just it just feels good. Well, congratulations on getting the win over Ike on Friday night. Just another great Ben Panther game, you know. Need a drive late to win the ball game. You got it done again. Yeah, wow. I, I told these guys that on Monday. I said I, I'm not even not even shocked by it anymore. <laughs> the way they the perform in clutch situations, and um, this one was probably the the closest one yet. Um, you know, our backs were against the wall, and uh, but you know, you just you just believe in them. You know, every time they go out there, every time they. Uh, you call a play every time they step on there defensively. You just uh, believe in these young men, and that's that's a good feeling. This has made it easy because I ask the same question to the players each week to come in. Okay, Colton, here we go. Season's on the line. You start that final drive. What's it like in that huddle? It's I don't I don't know how to describe it. Everyone, it's pretty calm, but like you still know that you got to you got to get the work done. Well, okay, so your quarterback's got to he's got to come and call the play, but, I mean, before he gets it and everything, kind of what the conversation is, who's the guy that's kind of leading everybody to, you know, let's get this thing done? 
it, it, everyone. Everyone's getting everyone going. How slow of time was it watching that ball fly for the 39-yard completion? I can just see it slowed down. You know, one of those NFL films, and it's, shoo, shoo, shoo. your season's on the line. we got to have this. Tell me about that last play. It, it felt like that ball was in the air for eternity. Like, it just hung in the air and didn't move. What were you thinking, Coach? Well, well. <laughs> Well, Caden would attest to this because I talked to him in the locker room afterwards. He just looked at me and goes, I probably should have thrown the out, shouldn't I? And I said, no, Caden, I did not. I did not say that. I, I said, I said, I would have never thought, I, you know, I, I, as the ball was in the air, you kind of go, well, uh, here's our season. You know, uh, when it's fourth down in that situation, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's first down or, or go home. So um, it was it was an uh, unbelievable throw, an unbelievable catch by Braylon and um, lo and behold, it actually kind of worked out better for us that, that Braylon didn't score on that one to give them a little extra time. So uh, I thought our kids, I, you know, from there, I thought our kids really um, stayed calm in the situation because, you know, people were kind of scrambling, going, the clock's running, the clock's running, and I'm going, well, easy, slow down. We got time. We got one timeout. Let's run the ball here. And then they they were forced to call a timeout because they didn't like the defense they were in. Um, so then we were able to talk about it a little bit. Um, and, and it kind of worked that we didn't get in, in on the next play. Um, and then, you know, to cap that thing off and only leave 22 seconds on the clock was big for us. Was Yeah, because at that at point, I mean, it's such a big play, momentum shift, places going nuts, but you're not in yet. So that timeout may have been kind of nice in a way, just kind of settle the troops down and, and let's get in our, our plan for the final seconds. Yeah, it was, and it was nice that we didn't we didn't have to use ours just in case we needed it defensively to um, to make sure if we, they got us in a, in, a, in a coverage we didn't like. Um, so to be able to to force them to use theirs, to talk about it, to call another run play, knowing we had one in our pocket, not have to use it because I just let more time run off the clock, um, and and then you know we get in our our heavy set um, with with Colton here at fullback, and you could tell you know we're all sitting there going this touchdown because they were they were expecting quarterback sneak and we just down block kick the end and and Cody walks in. Did you think they're going to give you the ball? Yeah, you know, I've been asking for a fullback dive. I've asked five or six times, but it, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, yes, we have been. We, we, each week, you know, Colton's one of those kids that he puts his body on the line every Friday night and, and Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes Thursday. He's he's still recovering from the night the, the that Friday night game. So um, I had an idea to put it in, but he was kind of banged up. He's kind of. And so I said, sorry, Colton, fullback dive's not in this week. So. Oh, that's right. I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm feeling way better. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the audible going here. We'll, we'll get something set up. Okay. It looks like they're, you've got a kid on the other, other team that's going to have a state record night. And once again, you shut him down the second half. How's that happen, Coach? Yeah, that was pretty uh, amazing job by these kids and coaches, you know, to to be in the position we were at halftime to feel like we were, um, you know, on our heels and just uh, we were making that running back uh, look like an all-state uh, track kid out there the way he was running. Um, but our, we made some adjustments and our kids hit the ground running. We put some kids in some spots that they hadn't been in, but um, Ian Primer comes down and gives us an extra force player and does an outstanding job, and that way we can leave Skyler in the middle of the field. And um, I thought our linebackers, I thought – uh, Matthew Johnson and uh, and Matthew Mater uh, played tremendous in that second half. Uh, really, really trusted their keys and triggered harder and, and um, did a great job defensively for us to, to keep them out of the end zone. How hard is it to make in-game adjustments when you have kids going both ways? Well, and that's why that's why halftime is so important. Um, you know, with the with the way technology is advanced, um, we have we have a new program called Sky Coach where we can see the playback instantly and. Our coaches are always rolling through those things as quick as we can. That way we can get the information to the kids at halftime and, and make the adjustments. But like some of these kids, I think I talked to Trent Kern, a uh, freshman for us. He only came off the play, or off the field for two plays in that entire game as a freshman special teams defense offensively. So um, some of these guys, you know, Colton included, it's hard, it's hard to have a conversation with them during the flow of a game. <laughs> Tell me about Kern. I mean, have you ever had a freshman play that much? No, never, never. I, I he he's probably setting a state record for the most snaps played ever in five A football by a freshman. Um, he's doing an outstanding job for us on the D line, and um, I don't know. Our, our our kids are just really playing as a unit, playing uh, for each other. You can you can really sense it, and 
Um, this one next to me is a good example of that, you know, because he's in a position that uh, the H-back, fullback, tight end, whatever you want to call him, he's got to know it all. He's got to know our receiving concepts, our offensive line concepts, our running back concepts, and then he plays defense. So um, a lot of these kids just are – uh, they are really, they are really students of the game out there uh, on Friday nights. Taking me back to the summer, cold when you're sitting there thinking about this season, you know, I know you just go, we're going to be better. I can feel it and everything, but you think seven straight wins and getting ready to take on Salina Central for a regional title tomorrow night? Yeah, I definitely didn't expect that happening, but uh, it just goes back to all the hard work we've put into it, like in the summer when. You wanted to give up. You wanted to quit, but we had two or three more sets to go. You just pushed each other, uh, making each other better. Anything to get the win. What's the biggest difference from this team after you started zero and two, and to to where it is right now, in your opinion, Colton? Uh, our confidence. We've definitely we've got a lot more confidence. We trust each other more. We just we stay in our role, and we don't try and do more than what we're supposed to. Tell me about the post game celebration. I've never heard about that before. That's that's so cool. I, I don't know. I mean, I think it goes a little bit back to, um, you know, Greenman kind of being uh, one of those towns that is, is really uh, about their pride and about this team and about each other. And, you know, you see all these other kids throughout the halls. I uh, have them in class. My wife teach, or coaches some of them in basketball. So, you know, I kind of walked by them and I saw them. I said, hey, let's go. This is, this is your team too. Let's go celebrate. So I just kind of opened the doors to them and they loved it. How was it, Colton? It was amazing. It was the most fun I've ever had after a football game. Yeah, everybody crammed in there and just – did you give the speech then or what? Uh, a little, a little okay. bit. I kind of turned it over to them and just let them have fun and jump around and enjoy each other. And uh, apparently Messina's he, – he slid in. I don't, I don't know how he passes a student <laughs> when I said, students, come on in. <laughs> But Jim slid in there. I don't know Jim looks like a 21-year-old. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Salina Central tomorrow night. Uh, big challenge. I mean, it's. I mean, this is you, as we do. We, we compare scores, and well, okay, let's see. Uh, they beat Ike. Let's see, and you know, Ike beat them, right? Yeah, that, it, that, you know that it, we talked about this last week. That Arc Valley uh, Chisholm Trail Division Two is just one of those leagues that. Um, they kind of beat up on each other a little bit, and this this line of central team is uh, is dangerous offensively. They are one of the more explosive teams uh, I've seen on film. Their little their little running back is quick. They got a quarterback that um, between the RPO and the read game and, and him running downhill um, creates some matchup problems. And, and we're going to have to be good there. Uh, they play some young kids, which is kind of nice to see. They have some freshmen sophomores on their uh, offense and defense. So um, I think it's a great matchup for us. I think um, uh, I think our defense is excited for the challenge. Um, offensively, we got to make sure that we just uh, value our possessions to give uh, our defense some uh, some time to adjust, coaching wise and and, and player wise. And uh, it's going to be a fun atmosphere. Um, we haven't been to Salina Stadium in a while, and uh, it sounds like we haven't beat Salina Central there in a long, long time. So um, it's not that long. That's when I graduated. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just a few years yeah, ago. Yeah. So, yeah. So it'll it'll be a fun it'll be a fun regional uh, championship atmosphere. Colton, what are your thoughts as you've watched film and, and getting ready this week? Thoughts on, on taking on Central tomorrow night? I feel really good about it. I feel I feel confident in all of our players. I actually like our matchup, and I think we can do some amazing things tomorrow. Some things uh, on the offensive side, looking at, at their defense, uh, some things that you'll have to do well tomorrow. <laughs> I think I think control the line of scrimmage. I think is going to be the key. Um, that's probably something that we've kind of we've kind of noticed that um, it all starts up there with us, and and um, that's an area that I, I I think is going to be one of the the big key matchups in this game tomorrow uh, is our offensive line versus their front five. I think depending on what defense they come out in is where we're going to shine. If they come out in zone, then our keys are going to be good. Our outs and sticks. But then if they come and man us up, number seven's going to have a great night. I like that. Yeah, we like that too. I don't. But did, you're not over there kicking him, and that's too much. Too nope. much. No. He's, he's good. There's nothing. They, there's nothing. Yeah, he couldn't say that they haven't seen on film already by now. So um, it's it's at this time of the year, it's it's mano a mano. Let's go. Um, play some playoff football. I'm more excited for the opportunity. Okay, we're about ah, 24. Let's see. Add a few hours to that. What are you feeling right now, Colton? 
Got to stay calm. Uh, over the years, I used to used to get really excited too soon, and then by game time, I was just too high. So keeping yourself composed and calm and just go play football. That's your feelings right now, Aaron? Yeah, uh, very similar. Um, just making sure we get these kids as uh, prepared as we can today. And, and like you said, I mean, we're, we're, we're feeling pretty confident. I, I hope we don't have to wait until the – uh, under 22 seconds this week, but uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I know we're we're excited for the opportunity and, and excited for these kids. Connor Nickel on the show yesterday uh, from uh, K Preps, and I love those guys because they got give you know what they think's going to happen. And here's what Con- I know Connor's listening right now too, but. Here's Connor Nickel yesterday on Sports Day talking about this matchup. Keon McMillan for Salina Central, four five speed incredibly fast. I think Salina Central has gotten better quarterback play than maybe what they thought. They've played in several high-scoring, wild, wild games. I would not be surprised to see Great Ben win this. I've got Salina Central 35-28 here, but it, this could go either way. I think as far as 5A West, you've got four really good games. Hayes Valley Center, of course, Bah, Hayes High's tremendous tailback. He has been out. And then we got Hutch, uh, Carroll, and then, of course, uh, Mays and, and also Kate. Great, Ben. What a season. Do they have enough firepower against a really good Salina team? Keon McMillan oh. for <laughs> Keon, oh, oh, Keon McMillan. Good Keon McMillan, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, hey, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love those guys. They, they, you know, they just all over high school football. And of course, yes. we'll check coupling on tomorrow when John Betts comes on the program and everything. Uh, I we love the underdog role. We've been in it all year, and and our kids they 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 feed off of it. So, uh, all you media personnel out there, keep picking <laughs> against us. I love it. These kids love it too. <laughs> guys, good luck. Thanks for coming in. Uh, great to meet you, Colton. And and uh, remember. Less than a yard, man. You got it's automatic, like <laughs> yeah, refrigerator right. Perry right, right here. What are you talking right. about? All right, we're going to continue high school football. Hoisington Russell tomorrow night. Zach Baird in studio coming up after this. Get the latest five G devices at Next Tech Wireless. Now you can get the iPhone 14 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus on us, or up to nine hundred ninety nine dollars off any other device. And that's not all. You can also get half off a new Apple Watch when you bring your number to us. Next Tech Wireless. We are Kansas. This is Barton Community College Athletic Director Trevor Rolfs. The Barton Athletic Department is proud to sponsor Sports Day on KVG, a show that showcases all of our high school student athletes in Central Kansas. Some whom will continue their educational and athletic future with us here at Barton. We're excited about the fall sports season that is now underway and invite you to attend a game or a match and experience the rich tradition of Cougar athletics. For complete schedules and results, visit bartonsports.com. Hi, I'm Linda Mader, and I'm running as a write-in candidate for Barton County Commissioner, District Number 1. I'm a common-sense conservative, and I'm very concerned about the out-of-control government spending in these uncertain and difficult economic times. Aren't you? We need a strong commissioner to control spending and to watch out for the taxpayers. Mark the other box and write in Linda Mader for County Commissioner, District Number 1. I'm Linda Mader, and I approve this message because I'm the one who wrote it. Paid for by Linda Mader for County Commission, Helen Hoffman Treasurer. Hey, Dak Prescott here. Why do I choose proven quality sleep from Sleep Number? Because better sleep elevates my game. My Sleep Number 360 smart bed helps me fall asleep faster, keeps me cool, and effortlessly adjusts for my best sleep. That's more focus, more edge, and more highlights. And that means more wins for all of us. And now save 40% on the Sleep Number 360 special edition smart bed only for a limited time. To learn more, go to sleepnumber.com. 
Now, in its second decade, it's Sports Day on 1590 KVGB at 95.5 FM. Presented by Barton Community College and the Cougar Athletic Department. Welcome back. Sports Day here on 1590 KVGB 95.5 FM. Heavy on football today. We heard about the Great Bend Panthers. They, of course, go to Salina tomorrow night to take on Salina Central. Hoisting Cardinals. They will be at home taking on an opponent that is not having to drive very far. The Russell Broncos will be in town tomorrow night at Elton Brown Field. Two A playoffs should be a good one. Zach Baird, head coach of the Cardinals, with us today, also bringing us uh, lineman Cole Gilland. Guys, welcome to the uh, studios today. Good to see the red in here. Uh, Thank you. Hey, uh, man, this is a fun time of year. I know that it. This is my favorite phrase, but it was told to me a long time ago. If you're getting done with football practice and it's dark. That means that you've had a pretty good season, Zach, and here we go again. You're getting used to dark practices. Yeah, it's always nice. Uh, if you can make it long enough in the playoffs and, and you come out for pregame with your first group and it's already dark and the lights are on, um, you, you know you've had a really good year. But, um, you know, this is what everybody builds towards is, is it's all geared towards the playoffs. And um, it's just such a long grinding season and, and trying to keep people healthy and and um, just trying to get better as the season goes on. and. Um, you know, hopefully for us, our, our best uh, football is still ahead of us. But, um, you know, as far as, as far as being healthy, I like where we're at. So, uh, you know, hopefully on Friday we can uh, come out, play well, and, and, and get a win. I'm going to just start calling it the Phillipsburg start. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's the way you start off against the Panthers at home. Kind of a rough start on Friday night, but uh, settled in time and got the win over the Panthers. Yeah, I think we were probably a little bit nerved up a little bit um, with it being the first game of the playoffs. And um, I don't think we could have – you know, imagined a worse start than what we got off to. I think we ran two offensive plays in the first quarter. So um, the one nice thing it does is um, it, it kind of wakes your guys up in a hurry, and uh, it's like somebody slapping you in the face. And um, I, I thought we responded pretty well and um, executed later in the game, you know, and, and able to do some nice things. But uh, it was nice to see some adversity, really, you know, because in the playoffs, um, at some point in time, you're going to run into adversity. So if when we get that week one in the playoffs – uh, it, I think it just makes our guys a little bit more used to it, and we're, we're, we're able to deal with it a little bit better. Cole, I'm going to ask you this question. Cole Gillen with us here on the show. What woke you up more, the turnovers or Coach Baird? Um, I'd like to say turnovers, but it was Coach Baird that woke <laughs> us up. I was going to say, I, I, I would have been yeah, – I think I heard you from where I was at on, on Friday night. But uh, So what was it? Do you think the team was tied a little bit, Cole, or did it just, uh, you know, this is just the way the game started? Um, well, we have quite a few young guys, and they haven't been in a spot like that. And I think it sort of got to them. But after that happened, we told them, just play it like a normal game, and they started to pick up after that. Yeah, so there's so much time left. You guys have been kind of through the wars, a lot of postseason games over the years, so I'm sure there wasn't any panic, was there? Well, there was a little bit, but we just had to calm down and relax, and after that, we got a hold of it. Well, and you come back and you get the win. Of course, that sets up the game tomorrow night against Russell. So uh, teams change over the years, Zach. As the, you, know, you have injuries, guys move into different positions, you move things around. How is your team different now than it was at the beginning of the year? Uh, obviously not having Jason Robinson hurts us a little bit because he's one of our skilled players um, that has a little bit of length to him and uh, is really good athletically. So... Not having him hurts, but, you know, it, it's always the motto, and I think every coach probably uses it as next man up. And um, we, we try to practice for as many scenarios as we can and try to build as much depth as possible. So I, I feel like we're, we're, we're fine as far as experience and guys that are going to play on Friday, you know, have an understanding of what the game plan is and, and how to execute it. So I think, I think we're good health-wise, and, um, you know, we're going to have some young guys play, but they're, they're not – normal young guys they're good young guys so um you know confident in their ability to step in and, and play and not have a big drop off so uh it's gonna be one of those deals with russell because they do give you some problems on the perimeters they've got long um, athletic guys so we're just going to be good with our technique and fundamentals and and the big thing for us is is we've got to try to find a way to play harder than they do because on film that's one thing that sticks out is, is they have a bunch of guys that play hard so um, you know, like we told our guys, that's that's what we've kind of hung our hat on um, and what we tried to build our program off of. So uh, it'll be a big challenge on Friday. Okay, and uh, who are some of those young guys that, you know, you go into the end of the season, you think, okay, I, you know, 
think, you know, if he, he steps up, who's the, some of the kids that have stepped up for you this year? Well, you look at it like normally you would say sophomores, and, and that's kind of the deal is, is you're hoping your sophomores are ready to go on Friday night at our level. But this year, uh, with everything going on, you know, we've got some freshmen that are going to play for us. And, um, you know, so Taylor Morales plays for us defensively. He's also our kicker, does a really good job. Um, Marcus Ingram uh, is a freshman linebacker for us that sees uh, rotation reps. And then um, Mason Martin's another kid that's a freshman. Um, that's going to see some reps in the secondary. So uh, we're extremely young, but, you know, at this point in time, your freshmen are more yeah. like sophomores, your sophomores are more like juniors. Um, and, and our seniors, you know, uh, we're going to have to rely on those guys. And, and a lot of times in the postseason, you'll go as far as your seniors will take us. And, and so we've got a good group of seniors, and, and hopefully we can keep this thing rolling. I like this term. This is the Sports Day Steve Webster term. Back in my day, <laughs> freshmen that saw action, that was unheard of. Why do we see it more now, do you think? You know, I, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I mean, are kids more – I mean, are they, they playing more? Or? I, I'm not trying to take a shot at you here on this one, Steve, but I wasn't around back in your day. <laughs> um, you so, were in diapers, buddy. Come on. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. Um, maybe it's um, – you know, maybe it's as far as the numbers. You know, I know back in um, – in Probably back in your day, okay. um, uh, Hoisin had a, a lot bigger school, a lot bigger student enrollment. You know, so I would I would assume that probably had a lot to do with it. Uh, maybe as far as numbers, out for football might have something to do with it. Um, for us, our numbers are a little bit down. Um, I think we're high 30s. Usually we're right around mid-40s. So um, they're a little down, but not anything drastic. Um, and, you know, normally I, I would tell you I try to do anything I can not to play freshmen on Fridays. Um, but, you know, if we are going to play them on Fridays, then they've got to be good athletes, you know. And um, they're, they're, they're going to be rotation guys that aren't going to play the majority of the game. I think, you know, if you look at it, the only time we've ever had a freshman – Start both sides of the ball was White Pedigo, and, and that's not a normal freshman. So, no. <laughs> uh, you know, for the most part, we tried not to play freshman, but um, we've got some good ones. So, I mean, they can help us, and, and they're going to have to step up. Zach Baird, Cole Gilland with us here on Sports Day today. Hoisington against Russell. Uh, Cole, Zach mentioned the younger kids on this team as an upperclassman, and you and your fellow, you know, upper class. How, how have you tried to help those kids and bring, them, and bring them along a little bit? Well, I'll just try to teach them everything I know to add – something to their plate to learn and every day i just ask them to come and give a hundred percent and i don't ask anything less of that who are some of those uh, guys for you when you were a freshman and sophomore that helped that help guide you a little bit um one would be my older brother wyatt pettigo and then riley filburn cameron schneewise chandler blackwell and jacob specht yeah those guys are, are there so when did you start watching Cardinal football and say, man, I can't wait till I get out there on Friday nights? Probably around when I was in fifth grade, sixth grade. Yeah, yeah youth football stuff and, yeah. and get it going. How's this season gone for you? Is it, has it been a solid one, kind of the way you expected going in? Well, coming in, I came in a little slow. I'm starting to get there, but there's some things I need to improve on to get better, to help the team out. And uh, let people know, you know, that why were you a little bit slow getting off to – the start of the season just not practicing the way i needed to not doing little things right your but, ankle's probably still yeah coming along That's, you know that was yeah. a, a pretty nasty yeah. deal as a sophomore um so i still think cole's just he's, he's starting to get healthier um as the year goes on um you know but that's that's been something he's had to overcome and, and um you know he's he has, he's done a nice job with it you're getting ready for this russell team uh how familiar are with are you Cole with some of these guys that uh, you'll line up across from tomorrow night? Um, I haven't played any of them, so it's all going to be brand new to me, and I'm going to be ready for it. Okay, I think last time you were an assistant coach on the sideline up at Russell. Last time you guys played, That's a good stat. I was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I ref that game. You don't remember? Oh, did you? Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. I was wondering how, how how you were able to pull that <laughs> that stat out like that. I you, thought. I thought maybe you and Cole Reif have been talking a little. You got bit. on me as much back then as, you, <laughs> as an assistant as you do now. But uh, getting deep in here now. This this Russell team, I mean, they've got a, you know, Hoyston's used to this, right? Postseason, town's excited. Man, it, it's got to be going crazy up there. This has been a great year for them. Yeah, you know, obviously we we're not in the same league. Um, we haven't played them for a long time. Um, you kind of try to follow the the area schools and see how they're doing, and and obviously they've had a a tough run leading up to this but you know what a what an amazing year they're having and um you know you never like to see schools um you know where they they continue to struggle so 
Um, I'm sure they're excited. They should be. They, they've got a great football team. Um, on film, you can tell they've got great community support, and, and they should. You know, uh, First-year head coach is doing a great job with them. Um, they've got a lot of really good athletes, a lot of good football players. So um, they'll be excited. They'll be hungry. And, um, you know, what an opportunity for us to, to, to play at home and, and see a team like this of, of their caliber. Um, you know, because they can – that they're they're good enough on the perimeter. Quarterback's really good, so they can spread you out. They can throw it. They can also run the football. Got a really nice tailback and and nice offensive line and good offensive scheme. So it's going to be a a big time challenge. Man, White Middleton, you throw seventeen hundred yards in high school football. That's pretty good. Uh, what what's his skill level that he brings that you'll have to contend with tomorrow night? Yeah, he's tough. I mean, um, he's a good athlete, so he he can run it if he needs to. Um, what I really like about him is. Um, when he kind of gets out of the pocket and stuff breaks down, he's always got his eyes downfield. He's not necessarily looking to tuck it and run. He, he can, but he's, he's wanting to make a play downfield. And, um, you know, he's accurate with the football. He's got a good arm. Um, they can roll him left, roll him right out of the pocket, um, and it doesn't seem to phase him. Um, so he's a, he's a really good high school football player, and, um, you know, he, he will give you, he'll give you fits. Well, and uh, for your team, you, you have a quarterback the, with Tony that, you know, hadn't played the position before, and yet you're a team that uh, are getting – every time he goes out there, it's got to be better than the time before. Yeah, you know, what he's done in his first year as a quarterback is um, really unbelievable and, and super proud of, of how he's played. Um, he's come a long way since his seventh grade year where he's playing uh, left guard. So i um, really proud of, of what he's done this year. Um, and it is tough for what we do offensively, you know, just mentally pre-snap – Knowing who read keys are, pitch keys are, um, and we've added some stuff offensively for for what we thought maybe would would suit his skill set, and um, you know he's 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 a smart kid. He, one of his biggest strengths is is he can he can see something one time, put it in his memory bank, and then next time he sees it full speed, he can go back and and, and learn from what he did the time before. So uh, he he's been a big part of what we've done offensively. Cole, you look forward to this matchup tomorrow night. What do you see as some things that are going to be important for the Cardinals to get a victory tomorrow night? We've got to be physical with them. we got to be able to contain their quarterback. And when we can put pressure on them, put pressure on them make, to force them to throw some bad throws. Okay. Uh, your mate's on the line. How's that, how's that come along this year? First offensive line and, and defensive line. Offensive line, we're doing pretty solid. We need to figure some things out, calm down a little bit. And realize it's just a game to us. It's, it's got to be fun. And on a defensive line, I've the other guys, they got to do the right thing along with me and uh, just got to be able to do our right steps and do our job. What's the message to your guys before you go out tomorrow? Give the Cole a heads up here. Yeah, um, first of all, I want them to enjoy it. It's going to be a good atmosphere. Um, you know, and everything they've worked for, especially my seniors for four years, uh, the, the, the time's now. So I want them to enjoy it, um, cut it loose, and we're, we're going to have to be good. Like, we're, we, we can't make mistakes. We can't beat ourselves. And um, we're going to have to play our style of football. You know, it needs to be fast. We need to play fast, play physical, um, be assignment sound. And we're going to have to make some plays in space because they're going to put you in space. And, and our DBs um, need to relax. I mean, they're going to get challenged at times. And they got to have the, the mentality that they want that challenge. They want the ball to be thrown to them and just go make a play. And um, at the end of the day, like Cole said, it's a game. And, um, you know, there's times in practice where we want to try to stress them out, put them in some, in some stressful situations. But at the end of the day, they've got to relax, cut it loose, and, and have fun playing a game that they've played for a long time now. You played some big boy football in your life, you know, and been to, you know, circus, see the elephant, stuff like that. As a head coach, do you ever get, you know, a chance to just kind of like, you know, this is pretty dadgum cool? Yeah, it is. You know, we've, we've been fortunate and been blessed with some, some good football teams. So, um, you know, we were able to play for a state championship and played in a bunch of big games to see a bunch of 16, 17, 18 year old kids that have worked hard for it and care more about their teammates than they do themselves to, to get that opportunity on a big stage. It's special, you know, and it's, it's always tell our guys, it's not the best time of their lives because they're going to move on to bigger and better things, but it's a special time and, and a time that they're not going to get back. And unfortunately for our seniors, our time's winded down. It's getting close and, um, just want them to soak it in and uh, enjoy it. Enjoy the bus rides. Enjoy the locker room time. Um, enjoy practice. Enjoy Friday night. And um, because it's it is special, and um, it'll be a, it'll be a fun one on Friday. So the game's in control at the end. And you ever want to go over there and when they start singing "Sweet Caroline's 
you know, chime in a little bit on that or I, I, I probably would. Um, it's one of my favorite songs. Yeah. Um, now our student body might kick me out because I might be the world's worst <laughs> singer. Um, and I wouldn't blame them, but, uh, no, we're, we're, we're blessed. We get, we've got a great student body, great, uh, home atmosphere. So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully when we get there late Friday night, um, and hopefully the game is in control and, and we're able to enjoy it a little bit. Oh, you do say so good, so good a couple times. That's all you need. I can to do, do that. Yeah. It just, it just yeah. doesn't sound real good when I say it. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for coming over today and uh, coming to the studio. Good luck tomorrow night, Cole. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking to you next week. Yeah, that'd, that'd hey, be pretty thanks, cool. Steve. Appreciate it, man. All Thank right. You. Sports Day rolling on here after this. From the Mayo Money Management Studios, 1590 KVGB, Great Bend, and 95.5 FM K238 CK, Hoisington. Hey everyone, this is Cole Ryan, voice of the Barton Cougars. Attending sporting events for Barton Community College is great, but did you know you can support the athletic teams even further by getting involved with the Cougar Booster Club? The boosters help with fundraising for equipment and facility upgrades to give Barton athletes every opportunity to keep succeeding at the regional and national levels. Join the Cougar Booster Club as an individual or business. Call 620-792-9377. Become a booster today. Go Cougars! I am Joanne Routh, the Democratic nominee for state representative the 113th District. Vote like democracy depends on it. Paid for by Joanne Routh for state representative, Kent Routh, treasurer. Sports Day presents On the Prowl with Mike Corson, an inside look at all the sports taking place at Great Bend High School. Welcome back to Sports Day, 1590 KVGB, 95.5 FM. Mike Corson, today joined by Great Bend High School football senior Caden Sharman, our quarterback. Big game tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, we're excited. I mean, it's it's they're there for a reason. It's going to be a tough matchup, but we're excited for the opportunity you have, and we're thinking we can pull through with another one. And, of course, you guys got there by beating Goddard Eisenhower last week. Think there's anything to talk about in that one? I mean, yeah, that was an awesome game. I mean... I talked about it with Coach Beck after the game. Like I'm, I'm almost tired of having to come back. I wish we could just pull away with one, but it's fun. It's awesome to watch. It's awesome to play with. I mean, the, the swag and the confidence we're all playing with right now is awesome. It's great. You guys come out and you score on your first two drives. I was really excited. Uh, some people had picked Eisenhower. What happened between those first two drives and kind of the comeback? Well, they switched a lot up on their defense. I mean, the first couple of drives, they were giving us a lot of quick and easy throws, and they started to take those away. They started to take away the stick with Colton, and then they were keeping their backs, their safeties back, so their deep shot wasn't really there. And their their linebackers stepped up pretty well, so we weren't able to sustain drives as well, and we had to go three and out a couple of times, and it kind of bothered us. And they were a team that ran the ball a ton, so they kind of stalled on offense and just let the clock run down like we only got the ball three times in the third quarter so or for three plays in the third quarter so yeah and uh, i'm a fan first so i'm on the sideline you guys are down 27 14 i kind of wanted you guys to go for it even though it was risky but alex galindo kicks a 37 yard yard field goal how big was that mentally to get those points before the half oh it was huge because i mean we just made a big play on i think it was it was either third or fourth down to Colton, and then we made a. It was a big throw and a big catch, and he got down it with one second left, and we're at like the tw- like the twenty seven, and then I'm like, hmm, we should probably kick this. So we we ended up kicking it, and it, it was good, and it was a great it was a great field goal, and so we were we were very confident going into half, ten points. I mean, we scored two times and we're up. So yeah, great Ben High School quarterback Caden Sharman. So you guys finally get a defensive stop, but that only means that you guys, your back's against the wall down, I think, inside the 10-yard line. I think three plays later, you rip off an 85-yarder. What happened there? And then I was shocked once you got to open field, nobody, I think you pulled away from people. Oh, yeah. So during, during the spring, I mean, doing track, it just helps a ton with your speed. I mean, your athleticism alone, like you're going to be able to jump higher, run faster, you're going to be more explosive. It just, it helps a ton. So, I mean, Credit Lashley and Coach Beck for helping me a ton getting getting a lot faster this last spring. What was it that sprung you? Were you actually shocked to all of a sudden have the whole field ahead of you? Well, I mean, they brought their safeties down because I think they knew we were running in because uh, we were in an empty uh, an empty set. And then Matt, the bats, made great blocks. And I mean, I was I maybe had a stiff arm, my guy, but there was nobody really within me, so I got a clear lane. And yeah, obviously the one everybody was talking about. It's fourth and eight. It, 
it's remarkable to think that it wasn't just the game on the line. It was actually the season. Not a lot of deep balls thrown that game. How gutsy of a call and throw catch was it? I mean, so the play before, we had motion Braylon over, and they kind of went man. So we were like, so if they stay in this, I mean, we got a one-on-one shot with our best player. Let's take it. And then we motion him over, and they don't go man. So we're just like, oh, crap. So I snapped the ball, and uh, he beats the corner, and then the safety's a little late getting there, and it was a great catch by him. It was awesome. Once he makes the catch, obviously you still got to run some plays to get in the end zone, but yeah. did it feel pretty much inevitable at that time? Oh, yeah. I mean, we get we got down to the four-yard line. We've been there, what, three, four weeks in a row. I mean, we were in it. And then the good thing was we ran the quarterback the quarterback run and on the first down, and they stopped us at the one. And that ran a ton of time off the clock, and that helped us a ton. And then the next play, I mean, they're, they're bunching their guys all in the middle, and then we're running it right where nobody is, and Cody pretty much just walks into the end zone. So seven game win streak now, you know, football was kind of down for a while, but how much are you guys feeding off the community response to not only your wins, but your exciting wins? Oh, it's been awesome. It feels like everywhere I go, someone tells me like great game last week or this community is loving it. And it's, it's really great to see the support because like you said, it's been, it's been rough the last couple of years for a lot of us. I mean, especially me and coach big, we've had to, as you said last week in here, we had to wear it a little bit. So this week it's been, it's been great. Or I mean, all season it's been great to feel the community and how much they love watching us and to look up on Friday and see the stands packed was even it was great so great Ben football teams headed to Salina Central tomorrow night for a 7 p.m. kick great Ben quarterback Caden Sharman good luck thank you very much more sports day after this when you need to get rid of the pain you want the best you need to see Dr. Dan Quillen at Catalyst Therapy and Sports Rehab Dr. Dan is Barton County's only board certified clinical specialist in orthopedic physical therapy no matter your age when it hurts he will help call Dan at 620-282-4825 that's 282-4825 excellence driven unrivaled results Catalyst Therapy and Sports Rehab inside the field house at 9th and Madison and Great Bend. Carpentry is a rewarding career for people who like working with their hands and find gratification in making things. Barton Community College makes it faster to break into this high demand career with great earning potential. Learn the skills you need to get started in a new carpentry career in just one semester. Classes are held from 8 a.m. through noon, Monday through Friday, leaving afternoons open for a part time job or apprenticeship. Visit gobarton.com to get started. Some of us were born to farm. Some diesels, like Cenex Premium Diesel, were born to fuel. Cenex Ruby Fieldmaster comes with a more complete additive package for a more complete burn to reduce particulate matter and keep filters cleaner for longer. Fuel your equipment like a pro with Cenex Ruby Fieldmaster and leave typical number two diesel to the amateurs. Cenex Premium Diesel diesel that doesn't mess around contact american planes co-op in gray band your certified cenix distributor today it's sports day on 1590 kvgb and 95.5 fm presented by barton community college and the cougar athletic department Welcome back. Sports Day here on KBGB. Steve Webster, Mike Hesher with you. Mike Corson's down doing all kinds of other stuff. Writing award-winning stories on Great Bend Post. What a good show today. Holy oh, it, it was great. Yes. What happened to Cher? I thought we were going to have Cher. Well, I, I cranked it up during the during the break. <laughs> I so. know you did. Well, I got to get this. People gotta have to know the show's over. Oh, okay. They're, they're going to have to wait till tomorrow to get more. Okay. 12.30. 12.30 right here. Tomorrow. Check Kaplan. Yes, sir. Going to be on. And more. Okay. Tomorrow night, Great Bend, Salina Central. 6.30 pregame. Might watch that. Some schools starting to move start times up. We'll see if that's the case with Great Bend tomorrow. Uh, Hoisington against Russell. Woo-hoo-hoo. And Maxville. 6.30 on 100.7 Eagle Country. And, yeah, unbeat Maxville Mustangs going at it. Also, shout out to my boys in the Road and Bridge Department out in Hodgman County. Longhorns at Thunder Ridge tomorrow night. Talk to you tomorrow on Sports Day.